Hello there everybody, my name is Boomer Brown and today I have decided to play a little bit of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, no ordinary version of Kerbal Space Program because I have been feeling a little bit nostalgic and have decided to uh, jump into my hard drive and dig out some of the older versions of the game that I have and this one, point, uh, 0 0.24, uh, it's a heavily modded um, version of the game. And uh, I thought it would be kind of nice to crack open a beer and dive in and uh, see what Kerbal was like back in the days when I began playing it. Now, to be fair, I think that I do have a version of point two, three, but there are uh, most definitely no mods installed on that. Uh, point two four was when I began to uh, get into the modding scene. Um, so yeah, we don't have uh, the availability to upgrade any of our uh, buildings. Uh, they are all already fully upgraded and the, the little interface here is missing. And uh, So yeah, we are back. In fact, this is back before the, uh, the big Unity upgrade as well. Um, so the uh, the atmosphere is a little bit, well it's got some nice clouds in it anyway, um, but yeah it is rather soupy uh, to get in and launch in. Um, we also don't have any cap on our contracts which is kind of nice. Um, so we are going to just uh, grab all of these uh, straight off the bat and grab ourselves a load of funds. Uh, I think that's why it was, um, there was a little limit put on that because uh, obviously you're grabbing quite a bit of money there uh, straight off the bat. Um, so we may as well jump in and launch a vessel of some sort. Um, <clears throat> and I better crack open their beer as well. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, that is very light stout. Um, I'm drinking um, Galway Bay Brewery uh, Buried at Sea Milk Stout. It's supposedly made using um, milk, sugars, and chocolate. Um, it's actually very light, um, and I think I'm going to enjoy that as we uh, cruise our way through this. Uh, these first couple of missions. Um, don't think it's probably a good idea to mix alcohol and rockets, but. Uh, well, I suppose, unless you're using it as some kind of a fuel source, maybe, but um, I don't think the pilot should be drunk uh, at the joystick. Um, so no remote take on this. Uh, I think at the time I must have been having problems with remote tech. Um, but I'm going to stick on a little antenna anyway, and we're going to stick a little flight computer on there. Uh, this isn't going to go very far. Um, well, we've got 2000 Delta V. Um, do we have any way of staging? No. It may be possible to actually um, stick this on and, and blast it off. Uh, no, let's let's not do that. Um, going to uh, check the staging. Uh, I think that's a little thing that was fixed in later versions as well, uh, but it stayed with us for quite a while. And uh, we're going to check for crew. Um, obviously, we have no female Kerbals in this, although I have seen female names pop up over in the astronaut complex, although it's just the male character model. Um, and these are looking very retro indeed. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so we've got a crew. Jebediah is going to take the helm. Uh, we have no science experiments. Uh, I suppose we can do a crew report or something and transmit it. Um, have we got any batteries or anything? No. Yeah, it's actually very strange uh, to be navigating this old um, system here. But anyway, let's get out onto the launch pad. And I am back. Um, though perhaps you're wondering where I am back from. I had a minor interruption there. Uh, to be fair, this rocket looks uh, a little bit um, out of place on this rather overbuilt launch pad. Nevertheless, uh, Jebediah is going to throttle us up. Um, of course, we have to use the shift key. The Z key doesn't do anything uh, in point two four, And lift off. Um, now normally 
uh, I would tend to throttle back this engine just a little bit um, just to spare us overheating our parachute but uh, once again this is 0.24 and uh, any uh, heating effects are of course uh, purely cosmetic that plasma that may form around our vessel is not going to do us any harm um, also because the atmosphere is rather soupy in this version um, the f sudden 45 degree jolt at about 10 kilometers is the most efficient way to get to orbit uh, so if you see me doing that please do not criticize me for not making a proper gravity turn uh, on the way up and we're getting close to burnout uh, we've actually hit a couple of contracts there and uh, so set an altitude record of five kilometers uh, excellent and launch a new vessel we can actually get rid of flight engineer there for now um so what is our actual um uh our altitude is going to hit around 20 what was the other record i think it was 50 or something um Oh no, reach space and achieve orbit. Okay, yeah, well, we can do that in the next couple of missions. But uh, for now, we have some science to get underway. Uh, we need a crew report, and we're going to keep that data. Um, and that, and that, that's pretty much all we can do. Do uh, to be honest, before launching, I should have uh, thought to do uh, a crew report down on the ground as well as an EVA report, which would have given us a little bit extra science uh, just to get us going. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to time accelerate down and let Jebediah um, cruise back down. A, a, a rather dangerous maneuver, but I'm sure Jebediah knows what he's doing. Um, yep. Did we not change our flag? Um, I think we did, yeah, we put on a rack. But it doesn't seem to be reflected in the flag up there. Oh! Yeah, things things tend to explode a little more in this. Um, perhaps that booster was just a little bit too heavy. Anyway, we are going to get uh, a Jebediah out. Uh, we are going to take the data and we are going to store the experiments. We are going to also grab ourselves an EVA report. And we are going to keep that data. We are going to uh, store the experiments. Come on, store the experiments. And we are going to hit F to board the, the capsule. Um, rather than the new B key. Uh, we are going to get to grab another crew port. This is the space center. This is our space center here. We are home. Um, yeah, we are very much home. Uh, we almost knocked the whole thing down. Uh, so yeah, recover the vessel. And see how much science we managed to grab. Okay, not too bad. We are up to 20 science. And Jebediah is back. Uh, let's see what more contracts we have got in. Oh, an altitude record again. We're going to definitely grab that. A stack decoupler in flight. Um, these are usually very, very, very specific. Um, and I tend to avoid them unless, you know, I've kind of got a craft that's kind of doing these kind of things anyway. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to just ignore that for now and head in here and see what... Um, science we can unlock or tech nodes we can unlock and um, okay we've got some new science experiments excellent we still have 15 left now okay so this is all our tech stuff and our engines uh, i think also um kw rocketry is installed in this yes the rocket max booster and the kw rocketry yeah so kw is in this Oh, this is actually kind of nice. Um, but it's 20 science. Um, or we can get this for... No, we can't get that. We can get this for... And that would give us our little engine. Some better parachutes because we clearly need them. And uh, a whole load of life support, which we're not going to need, uh, I suppose, just now. Um, so, yeah, I might as well give it. Does this give us another science experiment? No, but I think it unlocks the route to getting some more science experiments um are we down here yes our materials are our science bay our science junior and of course the compact survey unit for the keythane mod so 
uh, on to bigger and better things I suppose and let's just see if we can build out something that can get us uh, maybe not but onto a suborbital flight um, so we're gonna do away with solid fuel and uh, we're going to mm. okay that is slightly bigger and there we are, we're in. Um, I do tend to stop talking while the game is loading because I have noticed uh, in other attempts that this, uh, at least in other versions of the game, it does tend to uh, stop my audio recording, so there's not much point in talking. And it also gives me time to consume more beer. Um, okay, so, uh, just a quick check on staging. Yeah, we're okay. Uh, so we're going to head shift and we are going to oh yeah actually we need to get a crew report from here yes very important uh jeopardize grabbing the crew report we're going to get him out on eva hope he doesn't fall to the ground we're going to take the data take the data jeb store the experiments give us a little report how does it look up there um eva report this is a most precarious situation um Strange that. Oh, uh, okay. That's the store data. Um, store the experiments. Store the experiments. Um, EVA report. Why are we not getting anything for that? Um, maybe it was balanced that way or something. I'm not entirely sure, but we don't seem to be getting uh, any signs from that. And I definitely didn't grab it before. Uh, we're gonna grab a crew report as well. Uh, I think we may have already grabbed that, did we? Um. Take the data, store the experiments, F board, uh, and dump the experiment because, yeah, we did get that already. Okay, uh, throttle is at full, um, chatter is uh, going berserk, um, and I don't see any reason why we are not ready to launch. And 3, 2, 1. Whoa, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty impressive launch. Uh, the sound of those KW rocketry parts is absolutely incredible. It's a very beefy, bassy rocket sound. Um, and I have to admit that I do enjoy They did a really good job on getting those... Um, recording those sounds and getting them in there. And, oh, I do like these clouds. Um, the problem is the texture does tend to get a little bit weird as we get up. Um, but, however, we will... Um, We'll just kind of ignore that as we go up. There's also a glitch that comes in with some of the, the, the city lights, um, which is kind of weird, but we just ignore that too as it happens. And uh, we're veering slightly off course because I didn't engage my SAS. Uh, look at it, this is a vectoring engine. Uh, so we do have some good authority in terms of steering. Um, oh. Come on, uh, we should be pitching over by now. It's actually very weird to do this um, style of uh, turn again uh, after figuring out how to do a proper gravity turn with the later versions of Kerbal. Um, but unless you had something like um, uh, the name of it is actually escaping me at this point. Um, I'm going to bring up my orbital data while I try to remember what it was called. Yep, we are okay. We have reached engine burnout. And yeah, we might as well fire this engine off as well. Um, unless we're using Ferromero space or something like that. Um, you really... Uh, yeah, we can probably go pretty much horizontal at this stage. Um, since we are going to break out of the atmosphere pretty well um, but yeah the the orbital um, the most efficient orbital path is a little bit of a strange one in uh, Kerbal Space Program uh, earlier ver early versions of Kerbal uh, just because the atmosphere was so very very thick and soupy uh, just gonna hit time acceleration and bring ourselves up out of the atmosphere and get some of that sweet sweet science which we need to actually grab before we head out there um we're gonna observe a mystery goo and we're gonna grab a crew report very quick uh, yes excellent I keep that data for now and observe the mystery goo 
and observation minus space near curve and excellent and we're going to adjust and uh, review the data on this this is carbon's upper atmosphere no okay clicking the wrong things um okay we're gonna eva jab out we're gonna grab a crew report also no need to upgrade uh, in order to do any of this now um we're gonna uh, take all that data actually and we're gonna store those experiments and we're gonna board and uh, we may as well grab a crew report did we get one already i, th I don't think we did um i uh, did i reset that again uh, crew report cancel. Okay, EVA again. Yeah, I think. Take data and store all of the experiments. Uh, I think we've got doubles there or something. Uh, it's F to board. Uh, board and we dump the experiments. Okay, so uh, I have completely lost my train of thought, and we still have some fuel left. Um, I think we're past Apple apps at this stage. Um. No, we're not actually. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do with this fuel. I may burn it on the way down. Um, to be honest, I don't really know why I put it on here. Um, just building out a nice rocket, I suppose. So we have escaped the atmosphere, and that's giving us lots of funds and lots of stuff. Um, we may as well. Yeah, we may as well jettison this fuel tank at this stage. Um, Unless there's anything of interest we can reach, could we reach the other continent? I wonder. Um, let's see if we let's see if we can extend. We should, yeah, to get the most, we should be burning forty-five degrees, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Ballistic trajectories and ballistic arcs. Um, forty-five degrees is the nice, healthy middle ground, or something between. Altitude and distance. And altitude buys us time. Uh, because we'll stay out of the atmosphere longer. And we're coming along. It's actually kind of hard to see. And we've burnt out. It's actually kind of hard to see the um, the marker for the spacecraft um, against the white clouds. Which may be part of the reason why squad have yet to implement any kind of clouds. And wow, just look at that. That is pretty impressive. Um, yeah, the keythane overlay, it's, it's just made itself visible to me there. If we click on the show grid, I was always very impressed by that. I really like that kind of layout over the, that overlay that appears on the planets and the moons. I really, really like that. Um, and it's a shame. Um, and not to say the squad have done an excellent job with theirs, but um, yeah, I really did enjoy that. Anyway, with that aside, uh, we may well jettison this uh, disgusting little booster <laughs> because we're not going to need it anymore. And we're actually back in the atmosphere. Um, upper atmosphere at that, so we're going to grab another little mystery goo. Uh, we are going to keep that data this time. And yeah, there's nothing against me pulling the shoot right about now, but. Um, out of force of habit, I'm going to wait until we're a little bit lower down. Do, do, do. Let's hit the time accelerate. Yeah, so it does look as though my parachute is getting burned off there, but that's more a graphics glitch than anything else. Um, there is really nothing that can happen to you with uh, re-entry heating. Uh, though hitting the ground uh, going much too fast without your parachute will invariably blow you to smithereens. In fact, uh, actually landing on water in uh, these versions of Kerbal is actually probably more dangerous than landing on the land. Um, an ocean landing is quite the risky thing in uh, early versions of Kerbal Space Program. And... Yeah, there we are, breaking through the cloud cover, um, and down onto the water. Yeah, the texture does look very weird, all right. Um, though in some ways, it was kind of nice. Um, no, the tiling effect is a little bit weird, all right. Uh, what speed are we doing? We're doing about 140 something. We're about two kilometers up. Um, yeah, might as well pop the shoot now. 
Uh, it's n yeah, it's not possible to rip the shoots off. Even if you're coming through the plasma cloud, you can pop your shoot without any ill effects whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, I think we're going to jump ahead uh, to the next launch of the stitch. Um, just because I'm running out of things to say. And it has to be said that it's a rather unimpressive uh, craft that we have entrusted into the hands of Bob Kerman. Uh, though judging by the worried look on his face, he's probably uh, just as well pleased that he's not uh, put in charge of anything that is actually going to uh, leave the ground. Although, uh, we can kind of roll it about a little bit if we so choose. Um, probably best to leave it uh, in the relatively upright position. Um, yeah, let's uh, stop messing around and get the science uh, that we came out here for and we're going to observe mystery goos and we're going to observe materials bays and we're going to take crew reports and EVA reports. Uh, we're going to take that data, store the experiments, get ourselves a little EVA report in flight over carbon shores. Uh, yeah, I think that's a little bit of a bug because you're not technically in flight and yeah, we've got all that and we're going to uh, simply recover the vessel, although if we were to jump out, uh, we may be actually able to grab a soil sample. Um, okay, we're down on the runway. Okay, so let's grab a surface sample and also an EVA report from the runway. I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? Um, no, I don't think it was, Bob. Um, but uh, yeah, you decided to wear yours anyway um, because that's how prepared you like to be. Anyway, we're going to recover you, Bob, and uh, Analyze those uh, little surface samples you grabbed from the runway. Uh, you probably shouldn't be digging up chunks of the runway like that, Bob. Uh, for shame. Um, oh, I think our craft may have been deleted, was it? Oh, I don't think. Oh, this is not good at all. Um, I'm probably watching it back now. I gather the signs from this. Um, no, there are no active vessels. Oh wait. Uh huh. Standing by to launch. Uh, we are going to recover that. That's the one. Ah uh, yes, yes. Uh, crew aboard. Materials based study. Mystery goo. Okay, and that brings us up to uh how much science? A whopping forty-one, which I don't think is still enough to unlock what I wanted to unlock, which was, I can't even, I think I was heading this way to get the rocket engines. Uh, 20 science, it only takes 20 to unlock that, or was this I was after? No, I think it was this, uh, the bigger engines, uh, the more powerful engines. Um, to try and get ourselves into an orbit, um, we need another 40 point for that, though, would be quite useful to get this. Um, oh, the Maverick. Very nice. In fact, we could even do lunar missions with those. Um, so, should I grab some fins and some decouplers? I think, yeah, I think we're just going to grab those decouplers. Um, which allows us to unlock all of this. And we're left with three sides. So, that's not enough to do anything. So, I think it's time we start building out a rocket to take us to orbit. Um, first, let's see if we've got any contracts that are interesting. Ooh, a radial decoupler test significant. Um, orbiting carbon. We could just stick one on to the side, or two of them on to the side of the spacecraft. Uh, because they are radial decouplers at orbit. Um, yeah, it only has to be okay. So we need to be over 86, but below 89. So it's a kind of a specific orbit. Although, I'm assuming that that's not 
that, that, that our altitude at the time of the test only has to be between this, so we could have an orbit 80 by 100 and still complete the test. I'm going to take it anyway and hope for the best. Um, in flight, in flight, splash down the back solid fuel booster. Why would you want to test a solid fuel booster splash down? Um, activate the part two staging sequence and all test conditions. That doesn't really make any sense. Um, a small gear landing bay orbiting carbon. Um, well, we've got a year to do it. Um, so I may as well take that. Uh, splash up. That doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, um, although we could bring an empty one out and drop it in the sea, which might be interesting. Um, I'm going to take, take that for now. Um, it expires. Uh, the duration is 342 days. I'm sure I can get to that in some bit of time. Uh, activate the path through staging system when all test conditions are made. Um, yeah, well, I think that's going to be one of our main engines anyway. So, actually, we could grab that. And we can grab that. Because there is a cheeky way to do this. Um, if we head in here, and what we're going to do is grab this. And a modular girder segment or two. Um, hit the D key. Uh, hit symmetry. And uh, perhaps we should build it out this way a little bit as well. Yeah. Uh, maybe hit three times symmetry. And we're going to grab both of those engines uh, because they don't even have to be connected to a fuel tank. Um, uh, there we go. And we're going to take. Oh dear. There we go. Uh, I think it was the 909. And. I'm going to twist it, pop it on, uh, we've got Jeb, and we're going to just launch this because these are landed tests. Uh, we don't technically need to have any fuel in them, fuel and everything. Um, okay, and we're loaded in. And all we should have to do is hit spacebar. Ah, there we go. Two contracts completed just by hitting spacebar. Ah, giving us 160, and yeah, it's it's not a huge amount of thing, but it's giving us, um, it's two contracts under our belt, um, at very little cost to us, uh, to be honest. Hmm. Okay. And so, yeah, we've got a little bit of funds and reputation, and we are in the green in terms of reputation. Um... Yeah, so our name, well, we're going to just double check for contracts. Um, Parachutes in flight. Um, suborbital trajectory. Are we going to be doing a lot of suborbital trajectories? Um, oh. <laughs> oh. Apologies for those <laughs> rather strange noises. Um seem to have a little bit of a head cold or something coming on. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, these are far too specific. Um, and I can't think of a really good way of getting any of them done. Uh, because I'm determined to get to orbit. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to try and build out some kind of a rocket just to do that. And I'll probably skip the building process and get out onto the launch pad. Okay. We are back um, after a little bit of a break. Uh, I have got this rather silly looking and rather silly named rocket uh, ready for launch uh, with Jebediah once again taking the hot seat. Um, mostly because Valentina doesn't exist at the moment. Um, so, okay, we're going to throttle up to full power and a quick check of the staging to make sure that nothing is going to go wrong and. Ah, uh, yep. Okay, we're going to bring that back down. Um, I've included the landing gear um, because we have got a contract to uh, test this in orbit. And so without further ado, uh, let's uh, give it over to Jebediah Kerman.
Okay, so we're gonna head up as usual up to 10 kilometers and then bank over to 45 degrees. Uh, not a proper gravity turn uh, that we're used to, uh, but anything else is less than efficient in this rather soupy atmosphere. Uh, and Jeb is just loving this. He's, 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 oh, okay, we're wandering off because I didn't engage my SAS. Um, that's going to cost us just a little bit, uh, but this thing has uh, something like 5,000 uh, Delta V to begin with. Um, oh, and are we crashing? No, we're not. We're okay. We're okay. We're still going. Um, okay, trying to get ourselves pointed a little bit straight. Um, the alcohol flowing through my veins at the moment is probably not helping this uh, process uh, in the slightest. Um, okay, um, it actually looks like both of these stages are going to burn out at about the same time. I think I'm going to try and start leaning over a little now, uh, just because, and I think I should. Um, okay, 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 we're up about 12. Let's head out to the map and bring up our nav ball. And uh, let's see, we are at about a minute, and so we can start. I think we may have just burned the stage, have we? No, not quite, not quite. Um, so I'm going to start pitching over, pitching over. I'm going to lock the controls for now. I'm not going to touch another thing for a moment. And jettison those boosters, and away they go spectacularly flying back and we're gonna get back we're gonna try and rotate roll ourselves just a little bit and uh okay so we're about 78 okay we're gonna stop it about there and get out and have a little look um i can't remember the specifics of this contract um small enemy altitude 18 uh, yeah, okay we're gonna push our app waps up just a little bit 89.4 so we're gonna head up to about 90 uh, maybe a little over 90 uh, -da 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 -da. so yeah we can get it up to about a hundred and five so we're gonna get it up a little over a 90 okay and then we're gonna set up a little maneuver node here I'm gonna drag that out until we get an orbit. It's just going to give me something to point for and a time to count down because it's incredibly difficult to see exactly and they're about to flip which means that's up to about 74 and we're just gonna okay so we've got 89 here 89.9 and that will be 92, which is well within the range for testing our small landing gear. And I'm going to turn the rocket to face the maneuver node, which is probably going to get a little bit easier in space. We've actually got tons upon tons of extra fuel on board this. I say it has got over 5,000 Delta V at launch. Um, I've included a few solar panels and uh, some better parachutes. I don't actually have any scientific instrument instrumentation on this um which i probably should have put on um in hindsight but uh we're gonna not worry about that too much uh get ourselves lined up and we're gonna hit time acceleration and bring ourselves in up, 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 up. and we're going to uh throttle up to full and we're just gonna read the numbers off the uh flight computer there and Jebediah looks a little bit bored, to be honest. Um, okay, just gonna head out to the map view. And I think I'm gonna just get rid of that now. And we can kind of pretty much focus. Uh, have we got, we've got? we actually gone past our Apple apps, so we're gonna pull up just a little bit. And we start burning late, and we're gonna need to pull up a little bit more. And we have hit burnout, which means we're now going to be working with a much smaller engine, but a much more efficient engine. 
And away goes that booster. I don't think it was in orbit. Um, so it should crash back to the surface. Um, I'm holding the nose a little high just to try and drag back that apoapsis. Um, not the best launch in the world. Um, or in the history of Kerbal. But uh, we're getting there and I'm going to pull up just a little bit more. And okay. We're in orbit. Um, okay. Okay, we're officially in orbit. Okay, so we're not at a correct altitude uh, to do the test. Um, so our radial decoupler, if we had one on board, uh, we could um, have tested that now as well. I should have actually put a couple spare ones on there, actually tested the landing gear and then tested the radial decoupler, jettisoning them or something like that. Um, but I was a fool and decided not to do that. Um, we're going to have to uh, do a little bit of maneuvering. Uh, we need a surface. We need to bring up our surface display. Um, oh, we are at the... Um, uh, okay, run test. Run test. Have we done it? Uh, stable orbit, okay. Um, run test. The test is not running. Oh, okay, sorry, that's our radio decoupler. Okay, so we need to get up above 89, and we are currently dropping. So I think we're going to need to head around past periapsis, and once we get close to apoapsis, then I think we should be okay to run that test. Oh, okay. The altitude is correct now. Um, so maybe it has to be in excess of the 89.4. Anyway, we are going to run the test. And there we go. We have successfully completed another contract, earning us uh, some funds and reputation and everything like that. Um, so yeah, Jebediah is in orbit of Kerbin. We're actually going to... Um, rotate the spacecraft just a little so that we are actually picking up some uh, sunlight uh, that's pretty much good enough and we're going to we, we might as well actually turn it this way uh, so that Jebediah uh, actually has something to look at he can look out through his little window at the vista of carbon below him uh, with all those uh, janky looking clouds because I have the uh, resolution uh, the install I think yeah it's it's a particular file or something to get the different resolutions and uh, it looks a little bit janky um, to be honest at this altitude but anyway uh, we're going to uh, just ignore that um, because it does add a little bit to the planets. Anyway, uh, with all of that said and done, um, uh, all that's really left is for us to uh, deorbit the spacecraft and bring Jebediah home as a hero, uh, the first Kerbal to successfully orbit the planet. But I think that is going to happen in another episode. Um, if I choose to turn this into a series, um, I have absolutely no idea if I will. Um, I am not the best for uh, keeping series going, uh, as you might have noticed, and um, in fact I'm even back from my hiatus now, but anyway, um, I think that's where we're going to wrap things up, and I am going to say thank you very much for tuning in. You have been watching a slightly inebriated uh, Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and uh, I will see you next time. <laughs>